So let's implement the, the behavior tree for the enemy group. So let's go to the behavior trees and create a new behavior tree. Atoms behavior tree enemy. Let's open, let's create a new uh, blackboard. I be uh, enemy. Save and we have our blackboard. So first from the blackboard we need to expose some metadata that we are going to use inside the behavior tree. So first we need the position of the agent. So create a vector three key. Call this position and link to the metadata. Now add another vector three. This go in my direction and link this as well. That's fine for now. So let's start to uh, create the tree here. So first we need to check if, he, if the agent is in ragdoll mode or not. Uh, yeah, so we need to expose the active metadata to be able to check if it's in ragdoll mode or not. So it's an integer, expose. So conditional, the active should be higher and then minus one switch to int and this one link to the active okay now we need a repeat so we are going to repeat this one forever and let's turn on it forever we need an optional Yeah, uh, so in the conditional we need to check dynamically. And okay, now we can uh, we can use a, a sequence. So this is going to handle uh, the the pattern of the agents. So the agent go in one place, uh, wait some some time, then go another random place, uh, and so on. So to do to do that, we need to run a different task in a sequence. So we need a sequence uh, compass node here. So first, we need to uh, find a random point. You can use the EQS system if you want. In this case, we have already this this uh, task uh, just get a random node, random point on the on the nav mesh. So these these need to this find uh, a random point. So we need to store in the blackboard. So we need another vector three. And let's go this target position. So the target point here, this is the blackboard key they are going to write to the result uh, using the navigation mesh in this case. And radius, let's increase to 1000. And this is position to use um, to as a start point. And in this case, I want to link to my uh, position with data and let's increase the extent that is to project the, the position to on, onto the nav mesh so something 300 should be fine okay now let's key sequence find the random point then we need to uh, reach that random point so we can first we need to uh, First, we need to tell the agent to switch uh, animation and do in jog, in jog mode. So we need to uh, expose also the state metadata. Uh, the state metadata is an integer. And our 
asset blackboard entry nice the entry is my state this is an integer and the value should be one that is the id inside the state machine so let's call it run set job state let's call it find to target now we can use the go to okay so uh, the go to uh, using the dot mesh and we need a target position and our target position uh, is the one that I just compute uh, target radius that's put 150 so you return the successor uh, soon the agent is in this distance from the target position max turn angle let give 10 uh, increase the stand for the nav mesh projection um, okay wait one okay so we can run this at uh, every tick but it's quite expensive uh, especially when it's in patrol mode let's call this one patrol in patrol mode so we can uh, decrease the tick frequency so for example we can tick every um, half, half seconds uh, but if you are going to uh, if you are going to use a value different zero then uh, we need to store the paths inside the, uh, a curve so we can then at the next tick this uh, node can reuse it so we need to create uh, a curve uh, Cool blackboard leave all empty because it will generate about the go to and this one will be my part and should be that's it then when we finish with the go to uh, we need to set the idle state so let's copy and paste this one the idle state is the zero change idle and then we can wait some time here the wait nodes we can wait uh, I don't know, three seconds okay this one should be enough for a simple patrol uh, okay so let's have a look uh, sorry let's add this one to the enemy so add a behavior tree module and let's uh, select our t3 and change the order to words 5 if you here you can select a static interval if you want if you don't want to execute this at every tick uh, so let's compile it save let's have a look if, it, if it, this one works actually decrease the number of agents one so we can test with just one agent and then later we can uh, increase the number of agents so let's have a look yeah sorry that's something wrong here let's have a look um, yeah, go to the state machine, uh, just uh, set the star to jog or whatever, and then we need to do one important thing, that is to turn on the set uh, state agents on creation only. In this way, the behavior module just set the state metadata at one only um, at, the, at the creation of the agents and not at every tick. If I press compile, save it, and let's have a look. 
So now it's going well. So it's going there. Yeah, there's something wrong. It's not changing the state. Let's have a look to the to the behavior tree. One second. So here we're setting the state zero. That is the idle. This one is the jog, so it's fine. Let's have a look to the blackboard. So stay. Ah, yeah. We need to link the state to the metadata. Okay, let's save this one. Let's try again. And now it seems it's working fine. So let's reach a random point. Go there. Go there again. And the dynamics is still working. And that's it. Let's have a look if the computation stop if it's not active anymore. Let's play. So over here the go to way and then stop and the tree stop cool so we have our patrol that is uh, working fine now we can uh, start to um, create the branch for the, for the attack mode so we need first uh, a flag that we can use to check if the agent is in attack mode or not. So let's create uh, a new int key. Let's call this one attack. And uh, let's put a zero. We don't need to expose to metadata. So leave, leave, uh, leave this metadata to null. And now, so uh, we need uh, so we have this branch, this uh, patrol. So we need another branch here. That would be the uh, would be our attack. Uh, what we we can do basically is to uh, use a condition uh, and a selector. So let's create a conditional. Here. So here we check uh, if the int is zero, and in this case attack. This one we won't check every time. So here we check if it's in uh, attack mode zero, so it's the password, and go here. And then we need a selector. Because in this way, if this one go to false, then go to the other branch. And the other branch is the attack mode. Now we can put the conditional here. This one. Just to be sure. Because we will use it later. And Okay, so now let's put a weight for now here. Let's put some one second here. So now we have the two branch, one for the patrol, and now this one is going to be for the attack. So now we need uh, some nodes on our condition that will change this uh, this attack attack mode here. Uh, so. Uh, we can use, for example, the is visible uh, decorator. So the is visible basically uh, return uh, success if uh, if there is a uh, enough path between two, two points. So it's not probably that it's visible, but more this this rich pole. Uh, and we can use this decorator here. And so we can put a, a con angle with fifty, uh, probably 
I don't know. Let's try, let's try the 90. Yeah, let's try with 90 degrees. And uh, this one is going to be a dynamic, so we check every time. And max distance. So uh, we can use, I don't know, the 100. Mm, sorry, 1500 distance. Start point is my agent position, and target position is my target position. And let's increase the stand for the navigation projection, navigation projection, and cone direction. Cone direction be the agent direction. Uh, now basically this one stop the execution of the patrol if the agent sorry if the ah, sorry no yeah we're wrong here so we need with another thing so we need the the, the position of the player uh, so we need to uh, get the, the the player position so the player position is a is a global data so we need a global blackboard where you can store that data so let's let's close this one and create a new uh, a new uh, blackboard so let's create a blackboard enemy parents let's call this one this is going to be our parent blackboard uh, self factor. Ah, sorry, this is the wrong one. It's an aerial blackboard. We need a, an atoms blackboard. So, the B uh, enemy parent. Here uh, we are going uh, to write location that will be the, the pawn position, and it will be my enemy position selector tree okay save now we are going to use as a this blackboard as a global blackboard on the behavior tree component and in group behavior tree let's select the blackboard and now we need to fill that data to the blackboard uh, what we can do is to override the init simulation event. Oh, sorry, the init the event for init frame event. So in this way, it's called at the the beginning of each uh, each frame inside the atom simulation. Here we can get player. Player pawn, get location. Here we can get a reference to our blackboard and we can set blackboard vector three value. And this is going to be my enemy position location patterns give a tree parent enemy position sorry it's my enemy position okay so here we are updating the enemy position uh, blackboard value at basically each tick. Uh, so as, as you can see here, that is the agent ID. This function can be used to uh, modify also not just the parent but also the the uh, the blackboard of uh, of the behavior tree. So the blackboard entry in a of the behavior tree. We just need to provide the agent ID for that for the this way this node is able to access the right instance of the of the blackboard is able to set the value 
but in this case here this is a global blackboard so i don't is uh it's not uh associated with any agents it's a global data so i just need, need to leave uh, minus one set agent id here so i compile it and save it and save again here let's open this one and now uh in the is visible i can use my enemy position entry okay now so uh, we can check if the enemy is visible or not uh, but here we need to still need to set the attack mode so what we can do here is you can use the selector this one is dynamic yes so you can use a selector and with the selector if this one is false we can set Back for entry and we can set the attack mode. Attack to one. This way, if it's visible, then go to this other branch. So let's have a look if this one works. Save. Uh, let's let's play let's have a look to the metadata stuff okay let's play let's put in the bug mode here i'm oh, sorry it was already visible at the beginning so let's here let's put our sequence here Sequence puts in idle. And let's wait not thirty seconds, but three seconds. Uh, let's play. Now yeah, you don't see it. Let's have a look. I, we need to uh, switch back. Let's increase to five seconds. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, something wrong. Okay, why the attack is still? Let's have a look. Wait five seconds. Let's try to remove the weight so we can debug better. Let's have a look what is going on. Ah, yeah, we need to invert the visible. Sorry. If this one is not visible, then that's. And then zoom. Yeah. Probably we need to decrease the angle because 90 is too much. There is visible uh this point this is uh the half angle, so if we put uh, 50 degrees should be much better. Okay, let's Let's play and let's test this one. Here and when if I go here. Never mind this ball. Uh, now I'm not. Okay, so now we have something to trigger the attack mode. So 
with the visibility and also the distance. Okay, so now we have uh, our branch that became active. Uh, if the agent is visible, sorry, say if the player is visible for the from the from an agent, so we need to basically start to fire the agents. Uh, okay, so uh, what we can do is to basically uh, use a seek, use a selector here. So we have the selector here. So this one is going to be my enemy. So this one exit from an attack. And and here we need some condition here. So uh, we can probably use uh, like uh, this range. So as long the agent, the enemy, remain in a certain range, then you start to, to fire uh, the, the projectile. So we can put it here, and distance, we can probably use the same distance the visible. So 1000, 1000 distance. And this one is going to be dynamic. Start position is the agent position. Target position is the enemy enemy position. And uh, uh, here we need a sequence. So this one will be set fire state. That fire state that is the state with ID two, and then we also need to turn the agent towards the enemy. So we can use compute direction. Uh, so this one start position will be my uh, agent position. The end position is going to be the enemy position. And then we are going to modify the direction. Normalize is true. And should be fine at the moment. So we set the fire. Could so come to the direction sequence. Just one check if it's in range. Uh, and then if it's not in range the selector go to the other and we can call this one going patrol and should be should be that so let's have a look let's have a look see if works well fine Okay, we have something wrong there with the project time. Let's have a look. Let's have a look to the order of transformation here. When we are the offset, yeah, probably it's the inverse here because we are offsetting first. Okay, let's go to this one, and this one. Go here, compile and save. Let's have a look if it's going to be better. Yeah, much better. Now let's look at this one. Go outside, lose the. If I start here, oops. If I go here, I start to shoot. Perfect. And here it lose. Go and lose. Perfect. So uh, we can tweak more. For example, if we uh, shoot the agents, we want to uh, basically switch to the to the attack mode directly. 
So let's have a look how we can do that. So we need to uh, know when uh, an agent is been hit. Uh, so to do that, we can store a flag in a metadata. So let's go to enemy, go to the enemy group, add, uh, add metadata. Actually, we can create directly. We don't need the. Uh, can do it. Create directly the metadata. Uh, so uh, here on the hit event, we can uh, set the hit metadata. So we can do here the same things. Set boom metadata. Let's call for example hit. Right. And let's rewire this one. Okay, this one is going it's going to create the, the metadata hit. Uh, so we don't need to create this by ourselves. Uh, let's let's have a look. Otherwise you can create us the, the add metadata. Yeah. On your own, if you need to set specific initial value. Um, okay, let's save this one. Now uh, let's go to the enemy. We need to expose this hit here. So it's linked again. Uh, let's go to the behavior tree. So the hit should run on a, on a separate branch uh, compared to the selector here. Uh, sorry, not the selector. Yeah, but it's uh, here should be another branch. Uh, so we we need a branch that can run in parallel. So we need a parallel. Here the parallel uh, should go here to the conditional and probably we need an optional here and this is going to go inside the parallel okay the parallel change to uh, the failure to all, so only if all the branch fail, fails, then it fails the parallel as well. And then here, so we can put repeat the usual, since we need to run this uh, basically forever, with an optional. Okay, and then we need the conditional here to know if we if the agent is by, he hit by something. Conditional boo uh, hit here and here we need to expose the hit. Uh, this no, is not going to be dynamic because we need to just run one time. And then uh, we need to a sequence here, and then we are going to uh, set the entry. So we need to reset the hit to false, okay? And then we need to set the attack mode. That should be like here. Set attack. Attack. Reset it. Uh, okay, let's have a look if this one works. Okay, so if this one go the and for the yeah. 
now you see immediately go back go yeah. you see now I react immediately we can put some delay there for example uh, but we can do some better because you can see when you run just the project are just to any just do anything uh, we can probably play a hit clip here so we can do that we need to first prepare the hit uh, hit clip so let's go to the anim starter pack and we have the hit react here so we we can uh, set up this clip so let's go here this one is not going to be a loop clip over at the ground eight and, and basically that's it it's nothing that's nothing to set here and then let's go to the enemy tree let's put a play animation we have here uh, it's hit react one uh, we can play only the uh, the top part of the clip so we leave the legs uh, driven by the main state machine so we can put uh, here for example spine zero one if I'm not wrong this is the first joint of the spine in this way when uh, the agent is hit by something it will play this animation and then exit here and basically continue all the stuff so let's have a look Yeah, as you can see now, we play the, the animation. Cool, seems it's working fine. Uh, let's increase the, the agents. Ah, oh, sorry, closer this one. Agent group and enemy group. Put the mesh scatter and increase to 100. Probably are too much for this space. Yeah, very quite. Okay, the let's increase this this box here uh, oops, sorry uh, let's put an uh, by no, probably more than this one 200 200 Let's increase this one. Let's increase also the the bound. Let's post process. And last there an outbound.
150 uh, 115 let's have a look yeah no, much better maybe we can increase a lot more agents and mesh scatter let's increase to 500 